they shot about 50 percent throughout the game i think they ended there anyways um is that just a hot shooting team or were they doing something particular to get good looks that you would like to take away well some of more easy looks uh i think we gave up uh six just kind of walk in threes and that was kind of a priority for us is you know they're gonna have to work for them we know they're gonna be a volume sh three-point shooting team can we take away the easy ones uh you know, schematically, it, it's a little tougher with the bigs down the floor. It takes takes the rolls away, takes some of the secondary actions, but it puts a lot of pressure on those smalls. Uh, and I thought we had great possessions. Corey had some good ones. Uh, you know, Spencer had some good ones. Pope, um, you know, at times. But uh, the easy ones in transition, the kick aheads, the easy uh, transition, walk-in threes, you know, offensive rebounds, but that can't happen. Did you happen to catch what happened at the end of the game behind the bench with the fan? I'm aware of it. I kind of, at the scores table, so I turned around after I think it kind of began, uh, to my understanding, uh, uh, fan or several fans were, you know, said something that was out of line. Um, obviously, we have to take the high road. You just can't, you know, indulge in that. But um, I think it was, you know, a, a situation where something was said and then that was a bit, over the line and you know i think it got the best of uh one of our coaches but you know either way you have to take the high road thank you wes in particular during the stretch from this the start of the third quarter to the start of the fourth what what made them generate all that that distance in terms of the well, then we had some stretches into the second um and, and there were three stretches in the third um or middle of the third where, you know, I think I thought we were hanging in there. Uh, we struggled to make shots and, you know, you kind of look at it. We shot roughly the same number of threes, um, got up to the same number of roughly the same number of field goal attempts and they're a really good shooting team and they, they make life difficult on the, on the offensive end for, for any team. But, uh, you know, they had those, those spurts and we were to cut it to seven. And then I think that last 350 um, of the quarter is where they were just kind of, accelerating and created the separation that, that, that we saw. Um, you know, combination of technicals, things that stop at the play, I thought gave them some momentum. Uh, but we have to find a way to weather that storm uh, and, and not let, you know, let, let it get to where it got. You have a unique perspective because you've been a professional in, in this game uh, for 20 plus years. Have you seen the behavior from fans courtside get more coarse? Uh, I mean, you know, I think it's, I've seen it, you know, happen around the league or various leagues. You're just more aware of it maybe, um, but it does happen. And I think in the last probably year and a half since fans have been, you know, back in arenas at times, yeah, it has gotten a bit more egregious. So uh, it, it, it's difficult because you, you have to kind of endure some things you probably shouldn't endure and you wouldn't endure if you're in, in general public. But, you know, that's part of it. And you have to kind of have selective hearing at times and, and, and keep playing, keep going, uh, go beyond that. How difficult is it to overcome uh, three-point shooting nights like the one you had tonight? Um, obviously, it's, it's been a bit of a problem for you guys all year. It's tough. I mean, uh, we may generate decent looks and they don't go, so it's somewhat deflating for the, uh, the defense as you transition back. Um, it's also frustrating because teams are getting similar looks and they're making them. So I mean, the message is, to, hey, we have to continue to stay the course. We have to continue to work on it. Obviously, you know, it's not going to fix itself. But we can't get discouraged with you know, how we're playing on the offensive end and the shots we're generating. Um, so I, when we do get those looks and they're great, you have to encourage it. And hopefully, you breathe a little life into that. You know, breathe a little bit more confidence in guys to shoot those shots. Um, but you, know, you, you can't just hang your head and let it affect you on the other end. The turnovers was there a common thing? You guys have talked about how physical their defense is. Was that was it a result of that? To some extent, um, you know, and it's we've we've seen that at times. But you know, 17 turnovers for 20 plus points, it, you, know, you put yourself at a deficit um, against that team. You know, they're, they're going to take full advantage of it. So, um, you know, it's another hard lesson. And you know, at times I thought we handled their switching, you know, pretty well. But once again, you can't play in crowds. Um, you know, it's. As part of it, you can understand how you're being guarded and in space uh, appropriately. Um, hopefully, that allows you to, you know, play in a little bit more space and get downhill. But uh, if we don't, you know, it's kind of a byproduct of, you know, you'll see that. It seemed like your team's drive and kick game was pretty effective to generate good-looking spot-up threes. Uh, 
and they just didn't go in. In other words, the process was fine, but the execution wasn't. It was that your view of the game, or is that to an extent? I mean, I think we did stagnate a little bit at times. I mean, there were also some times where you know I thought we we kept energy in the ball. We had great ball movement. Um, found secondary actions and small small pick and rolls were effective. Um, but to your point, if you know if you don't get the payoff, it, you know really. You can say, "Hey, that's a great, great process," but it's it's uh it's deflating at times. In general, what do you think about your closeout runs, please? Uh, in general, um, I think on the season it's been decent. Um, at times, um, it's lacking. Now you you can look at uh, tonight, and I, like I said, I think like five or six of them were in transition where they're just quick hitters. Um, you know, those are preventable. Um, the catch and shoot stuff—that's difficult. But, uh, you know, the easy ones you just can't happen. We know that those teams and those guys in particular, you know, Robinson, Struess, um, that's how they generate easy points. So can we take that away? Uh, I thought, you know, we've allowed some separation early um, and they got going. But in general, you know, those don't beat you, you know, if, if, you, if you do the job that you're supposed to be doing. Neil. Hey, Coach, I know in the grand scheme of things, it's not all that important, but what did you see on when Denny got a technical? Uh, honestly, I didn't think he wanted a tech. Um, you know, I know he, he was talking to me. He didn't say anything um, inflammatory or, you know, he didn't cuss or anything like that. I think the officials were, I think, tired of complaining on both ends. Um, so we got it, but, you know, you, you can't take that away. I just think we have to cooler heads have to prevail. We talked about it before the game. This team is very handsy. They're, they're going to foul, you know, more often than not, and it's not going to get called. So you have to rise above that, knowing knowing that it's going to happen. Um, and you can't fall into that, that frustration. So it's a thin line between pleading your case and, um, you know, advocating on your behalf. But, you know, if you're not going to, uh, if you're not going to, you know, uh, do anything, it's just, it is what it is. Those are free points. Uh, so you just have to be mindful and, and not fall into you know that frustration. Along those lines, does the physical? Do you think that your team doesn't take advantage of the physicality that the refs may allow often enough? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, you know, I think it's just it, they've been playing that way for you know decades. You know, and we're not quite there yet. You know, as a group, you know, a lot of it is technique based. I think he can be a lot more physical, you know, with the proper technique. And when, early in the season, I thought, you know, the fouls were a problem. You know, in general, we've done a better job of, of defending without fouling. So there, there's some improvement in that area. Uh, but just being able to do that possession after possession, I think is important. Thanks, Coach. Last question to Wayne. Hey, Coach, how you doing? First, just wanted to get your thoughts on Corey's 20-point night. Oh, uh, he found points in a number of ways. I mean, he's cutting, offensive rebounding, um, even as a pick and roll player. You know, it's something that he's continued to work on. Uh, you know, keeping the ball, uh, keeping energy in the ball, and being a screener. And, you know, everyone anticipates him slipping to space to find threes, but he's, he's mixing in rolls, which has been effective for him as a scorer or a playmaker. Uh, so just adding another layer to you know his game, and I think that allows him to uh, impact in different ways. Yeah, he struggled to, you know, to shoot the three, but I like the, sh the threes that he generated. So uh, I want him to have confidence in those shots and continue to shoot them. And lastly, Coach, I just noticed that you, you guys threw a couple of people at Bam. He had to work for that 21 that he got. I just, what, what were your thoughts on the defensive effort on Bam out of bio tonight? Overall solid. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, we, we, we live with the con late contested and mid-range twos. Um, you know, he had a couple of post-ups against the switches, some offensive rebounds and some rolls. Um, the pick and roll part, you know, where he's finding it in the pocket and finishing, those are preventable. You know, I think we, we got to make sure we're pulling in on the weak side and protect that paint. But, you know, in general, um, I thought he had to, to earn it. So yeah, I was pleased with, you know, the overall effort. How do you, you sum up these last, uh, you know, nine games you guys have lost eight of them? Um, and just kind of the, the situation your team is in right now. Uh, I think the biggest thing with us is, um, you know, over the past games is our effort level and then, um, you know, our response, you know, you know, it's really tough, um, you know, when you get punched in the face and um, you don't stand up. And um, I think that kind of just, you know, sums up, you know, what's kind of been going on, you know, as soon as we hit a little bit of adversity, it's, um, you know, it's quite a challenge to get out of that.
And uh, in order to be a winning team, um, you know, you have to be, you know, a lot mentally stronger than that. And um, it's something that we've lacked. So what's the process been like as you guys try to get out of that? Um, it, it seems like I'm sure you guys are trying a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, you know, we've uh, we've tried a bunch of different things and, um, you know, we still have to keep trying, um, you know, you just can't give up, can't just give in and, you know, just try to, you know, end the season right now. You know, it's it's, it's very challenging, um, very challenging time for a lot of different people. You know, uh, you know, we got a bunch of guys that are fighting for their next contract, um, you know, mentally trade deadlines right here. So. Um, that creeps into a lot of guys' head around this time. And, um, you know, those challenges present itself uh, to a different level when you're trying to, you know, play winning winning basketball. So, um, you know, just got to keep trying to figure out and, you know, just chop wood, carry water, you know, come in, never get too high, get too low, and, um, you know, just just keep going. Just got to have faith. So, Kyle, that level resilience was one of the hallmarks of the team early in the yeah. season and uh, it seems to your point that it has dissipated why is it dissipated why has it gone from a very high level to begin the season to the level it is now um you know i, I think um you know the biggest thing for us is we have to we have to get out of thinking about the individual and we have to think about the team you know, what's best for the team, not what's best for, you know, myself, um, the next man, you know, it, it's about the next man. It's about, you know, helping one another. And, you know, I think at the beginning of the season, um, we had that type of attitude and, um, you know, it, it showed, you know, just the way we were playing and, and connected, especially on that defensive end of the floor. So for us, um, you know, when you asked about the resiliency um, and how it dissipated, um, you know, I think, you know, in order to be resilient in a sport, a team sport, it, you have to think about the team first. And, um, you know, right now it's, 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 it's really, really murky um, in that sense of, of, you know, trying to have another guy uh, be happy for the next guy. Um, that's what you want. And um, something that we need to find again. Cruz, you just mentioned it a couple of minutes ago, you know, trade deadline coming up. What are the next couple of days? You've been through this whole process several, you know, plenty of times you've been yeah. in this league long enough. What is this like period like just for a team now? Is everybody kind of sits and waits in the uncertainty of, of what's going to happen? Yeah, it's a really, really challenging time um, in the NBA and in this league. You know, I think for me, um, every single year I was in Los Angeles, I was in trade rumors and, um, you know, my first couple of years, it was new and it's a foreign territory for you. And, um, you know, naturally as a human, you know, when somebody wants to trade you, you feel as if um, you're not wanted. You, you feel as if, um, you know, the world is kind of, you know, against you. And um, that affects that affects you as a human. And then correspondingly to the basketball court um, affects your play. And, um, you know, I've seen it. I've been through it firsthand and, you know, the biggest thing during this period, you have to understand, you have to, you have to be a professional at the end of the day. You know, you still have to come into work. You still have to, you know, figure out a way to work together, um, you know, in this space because that's all we got. You know, the trade deadlines here. Some people may be gone. Um, some people may not. We may not have nothing going on. So, you know, it's it's a lot of wasted energy when you you put those thoughts and you let those thoughts like creep inside your head. And, um, but like I said, you know, it, it's a human thing. It's a real thing, especially when you got guys that, you know, fighting for their next contract, fighting for their livelihood, um, you know, fighting for a check. And, um, you know, it's, it presents a tough situation when you're trying to, you know, play winning team basketball, so. Three-point shooting has been an issue for you guys all year. Um, just how difficult is it to navigate around nights like this where you guys go seven of 31, shoot 42% from three? Um, you know, it's just a challenge. It's, um, you know, for us, um, 
it's hard to really explain, you know, you know, everyone comes in the gym, everyone works, um, you know, every single, every single day, the coaching staff has, um, you know, uh, a sit time for everyone to shoot uh, pre-practice, post-practice, and most guys are out there. And, um, you know, it's just, I don't know if it's a mental situation that we're going through that we, we can't knock down open shots or, you know, maybe we're not generating the right shots. Um, you know, you know, a lot of distress shots. You know, it's, it's you know, it's all about confidence and, and understanding and, you know, believing that you can make shots. And uh, right now, in all season, we necessarily haven't had that belief, um, you know, believe individually that we're going to make shots. How do you feel like your on-court chemistry is developing with Rui? Uh, I enjoy playing with Rui. Um, you know, I, I want him to uh, succeed. Um, you know, every time we're out there, I'm always telling him, yo, man, be aggressive. You know, stop thinking. Go out there, try to score. You know, be aggressive, because that's going to open things up for everyone else. Um, and, um, you know, when we played together, you know, it, it's looked pretty good. You look at, you know, that Philly game, um, certain parts in the Milwaukee game, um, you know, me and him can click because, you know, playing three, four, one of us is going to have a mismatch in the weaker defender in those spots on the wing. So, um, you know, I, I like playing with him. He's a good kid. Um, he listens. He wants to be better, wants to get better, takes criticism really, really well. Um, it's never personal. And, um, you know, you can tell he wants to get better. So this was um, your guys' seven straight game against top 10 defenses in the league. Um, what do you notice going up against teams like Miami and Phoenix about how they play as a team defensively that you guys could use um, to apply to your own defense? Um, I, well, I think you just said it. Um, you know, it's about team basketball, right? In all aspects. If you want to win basketball games and ball games in this, this league, um, you know, you have to be connected defensively. And, um, you know, when you look at a team like Miami, they do a great job of, of, of plugging gaps, allowing you, you know, not to come in the paint and score. You know, you have to beat them from outside. They're going to switch one through five. Um, they have very, very smart defenders, high IQ guys, a lot of good vets, um, you know, that played quality, quality, winning meaningful basketball in this league. So, um, you know, if you look at most of the teams in, in this league that, um, like you said, top 10 defenses, they all have one thing to um, – Two, a couple of things in common. And, um, you know, that's one high IQ guys, selfishness, knowing that, you know, if, if someone gets beat, they're going to have somebody behind them. And then three, you know, they communicate. And I think those are three things that we can kind of, you know, learn from, from this stretch of, you know, taking L's, you know, I like to call them lessons. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, collectively as a team, and the unit, we learned something from it. Matt. Hey, uh, Goose, just going back to the trade deadline and what you were kind of speaking about, when things are going like this, do you expect there to be major changes? Um, you, you never know at the end of the day. Um, you just never know, um, you know, what the, the trade market is, um, you know, because it's you never really know until – a couple hours before the deadline at the end of the day. That's why, you know, in the NBA, you always see, you know, um, a domino fall and then everything else goes. So, um, you know, as a team and as an organization, um, you know, not speaking in this situation, but um, anytime there's a trade deadline and, you know, your organization and you feel like you can improve the team, you're going to do it nine, 10, 10 out of 10 times. So, um, you know, that's all I can really say on, on that part uh, within the deadline and, yeah. and then, um, something's going to happen. So, And then just going back to your point about the overall needing collectiveness to buy in and playing team basketball. I mean, a lot of you guys are veterans and you've come from winning pedigree as well. Why do you think that aspect hasn't clicked? Or like, are you guys not using that experience? Like, what do you think has kind of led to that? Um, well, it's really tough. You know, if you look at our team, um, 
you know, me and Pope are the only, you know, champions, you know, that aspect, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge trying to convert yourself to play winning basketball. You know, I, I kind of go back to my third year in the league. Um, after my first two years, you know, we had a losing record in LA and um, that third year, it was like, you know, we're trying to win a championship. And it was a challenge for me to um, learn how to play winning basketball. But, um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, become a winner. I wanted to learn how to play as a team and as a unit. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, you can only depend on, you know, um, um, you know, former experiences only so much, you know, cause you can only control what you can control and, you know, you just gotta hope everyone collectively wants to do that and wants to, um, be a party, be a part of something bigger than themselves. Thank you. Last question, Anil. Hey, Kuz. Um, with under four minutes left going into the timeout, it seemed like you and, you know, Denny had a kind of a teaching moment. I'm just curious, you know, what you saw that you maybe were trying to relay him to help him out. Um, yeah, I mean, um, anyone that's receptive of, of trying to be helped, I'm always trying to help people. Um, at the end of the day, you know, when I was, a, well, I'm still a young player. Uh, I talk like I'm a vet, but I'm really not. But, um, you know, I, I had people that, you know, I came to and I wanted to get better and then they helped me. So for me, having those type of experiences, I always want to just pave the way for people and help them out. And uh, Denny's one of those people, Rue's one of those people, um, you know, that they take, you know, critic I wouldn't even say call it criticism. It's just, you know, food for thought. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a play, Rui was posting, Denny cut, Rui was going into the action and we got nothing out of it. So, you know, just tell him, you know, you have to you know, read your cut. You have to understand, you know, the spacing and the timing of the cut. And, um, you know, for him, he's a great cutter. He's a very, very smart player. And, um, you know, he's got a bright future, so. What do you think this game got away from you guys, uh, particularly there in the second half? I mean, they just, Shut the lights out, honestly. Um, you know, whether we had a hand up or not, um, whether, you know, they were moving or not, um, it just seemed to go in. So, um, sure, there's a lot of things we could have cleaned up defensively, but um, at the end of the day, when they're putting the ball in the hole um, like that from deep, it's hard to hard to stop. How about your guys' own three-point shooting? You know, it's been something that um, has been an area where you could improve probably all, all season long. And just how, how difficult is it to get around a, a shooting night like this where you guys have had probably far too many of them? Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard, um, especially when you make the right play and you get guys a wide open shot. I mean, including me, um, my shooting performance was, you know, unacceptable on my standards. Um, I can shoot the ball. And I need to shoot the ball way better than I did tonight. And, um, you know, guys are working hard to get me open. And when you don't come through, um, it stinks, it sucks. But... Um, that's part of the game. It's part of the process. And, um, you know, if we keep keep shooting, we have enough talent. We have more than enough talent on this team that we can shoot, you know, with really high numbers. I know, um, I know you missed some shots that you would have liked, but still a uh, pretty good game in the, in, in the scoring department for you. What, what do you think outside of those shots that you missed? What was working for you so long? Yeah, just finding other ways to have an impact, um, whether that's offensive rebounding or cutting or um, – you know, sprinting the floor. Uh, I got one to go tonight and that felt really good. So I'm going to try to build on that and you know, just keep playing hard. You know, it um, doesn't matter what the score is, what the outcome is going to be. Um, all that matters is, you know, how you play. And if you're down 30 or you're down five, it shouldn't dictate how you play. So try to, you know, let that speak in my game tonight and, you know, play as hard as I could no matter what. How do you feel about your overall progression just overall throughout the season? Oh, I feel great. I feel great. I mean, the credit goes to everybody else in the locker room helping me, you know, um, making me comfortable, you know, in my own skin, make me feel accepted and welcomed. And, um, you know, it's just natural to, to be comfortable around these guys. So um, they breathe confidence into me and um, I'm really happy with the way that I've progressed and that, you know, feeling better and better each week um, from now and the start of the season. 
What was your vantage point on the? Uh, it seemed like there was an incident between uh, the coaching staff, maybe, and a fan toward there toward the end of the game. There, I didn't see it. Um, just saw everyone kind of looking over and saw some bodies kind of clustered together on the on the bit on the sideline there, but um, didn't see anything happen. Didn't I? Don't even know how it started. Is this from Rui? Yeah, this is from this is from. Uh, how are you feeling after that? Oh, I feel fine. Like it's it's just there's like a mesh kind of on the top of his shoe, and so it's more of like a burn um that's scabbing over right now but you know it's the touch my nose feels fine how do you feel like your on-court chemistry is developing? yeah it's getting i mean it's it's definitely high already and it's getting better each game um i mean he had i he hit me on a cut and i finished with a layup earlier today i mean earlier in the game and um he's kind of getting a feel of where i'll be and i'm getting a feel where he will be you know at certain times on the floor and um We've had years of experience together, and you know, each time we get out there on the floor together, uh, the chemistry only gets stronger. Other than the kick, could have gone without that one. Last question to Neil. Hey Corey, obviously you guys, you know, as an organization, thought, okay, we're going to have a lot of shooters on the floor. You know, between you, KCP, you know, you guys have a lot of on paper guys who can shoot the ball. Does the, I don't know if demoralizing is the right word, but does that build up and kind of have a snowball effect when just multiple times throughout the season, you guys unfortunately have shooting nights like tonight? I mean, no. Uh, we see what Pope and DB and Brad and Spencer and everybody down the line can do in practice. You know, everyone puts work in. Everybody... Um, you know, gets gets their butt in the gym and works their tail off, you know, on this team. So um, just because things don't fall, you know, during the games, you know, thankfully we play, you know, in three days or in two days or we have a back-to-back -to, -back to, to fix it. And, you know, while, you know, it has, it has its moments, um, it's not like it's guys who shouldn't be taking those shots. It's everybody has earned the right to shoot. And um, we have the most, I have the most confidence in anybody who takes a shot and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure that goes for the rest of the team. Thanks, Corey. Last question to Felix. <clears throat> All right. First off, I want to say good evening. Hello. And, of course, this is obviously a tough loss for the team, but there was a bright spot in the tough loss. Of course, the Wizards were able to outscore, or you all were able to outscore Miami in the paint by a significant margin. So I just wondered how you think the team can capitalize from that, how they can capitalize from that strength and see how it can translate into success elsewhere. You just gotta keep attacking the paint. I mean, honestly, Trez and um, TB and, you know, the other guys are so good at getting in the paint and Brad when he's back is really good at getting in the paint. So it's a strength of ours. We're gonna live at the rim. We're gonna make teams adjust. And, um, you know, a team like Miami lives on, you know, clogging the paint and we still got buckets, you know, in the paint against them and, um, you know, just missed those shots from outside that were um, going to be going to be complimentary to that. So uh, that's our game plan going into every game. We got some great scores at the rim and, uh, you know, that's no secret to anybody in the league.